All right, thanks for joining us as we are recording on a very late Thursday evening. Just a couple of days uh, before our race card takes place at Saratoga and Del Mar. Thanks for joining us here once again on Horsepower PSN. I'm your host, Greg DePama, and joining us uh, each week is professional horse trainer Chad Summers. How's it going, Chad? It's a long, uh, long and tiring process. Yeah, matter of fact, uh, we have some very interesting uh, takes on last week's show. Uh, but you definitely look a lot more chipper than last week, believe it or not, even though we're recording at 10, 10 in the evening. How's it going, John? Good, thanks. Long day. Yeah, John John had about a six-hour travel day uh, himself. So I, I don't think there's anything better than uh, driving in traffic in the New York area. So can't say that I uh, envy you, John. Uh, let's, uh, before we get started, uh, this is as good a time as any to uh, say hello to our newest Patreon members. A couple of weeks ago, I uh, didn't have time, uh, but uh, Bob, uh, I think we mentioned Bob Froggy3395. He joined us on Patreon. Last week, it was Clay Sanders. So Clay Sanders became our newest Patreon member. Uh, so, uh, good to have Clay on. Wanted to make sure that we got, uh, his name out there. Shout out to him and check out Patreon. We have a link in the description, $5 a month. You can cancel at any time and you get the opportunity to watch, uh, 100% of everything that we uh, talk about each week here on our horse racing show. So, uh, definitely check that out. Uh, meanwhile, uh, last week, uh, again, as I said, we had a pretty entertaining show for the viewers, or at least some of them. Uh, L.A. Boyko said, Now 18 minutes in, putting the over-under at 28 minutes when Chad starts snoring. Uh, Pat Palazzo, 3268. Chad should have used audio only instead of video. He was out of it and making me tired. Uh, and uh, also, uh, Salmandello, 6955. Man, let Chad get some shut-eye, guys, really. Thanks, Chad, for all your effort. And by the way, oh. those efforts... Uh, you see, it doesn't matter if Chad's uh, half asleep or not. You still pick two winners uh, that uh, took place on last week's show from Monmouth Park. Uh, we had, of course, uh, the big race last week at the Haskell... Uh, Chad, so what did you think about the uh, win again from Doorknock? Doorknock is uh, trying to put himself in contention for Horse of the Year. I don't think he's Horse of the Year, but he was the Haskell winner, and uh, he's a resilient, gritty kind of throwback of a horse, and he clearly has mind frames number. I, I, you know, I mean, I know he's the uh, de facto leader of the clubhouse now, but I mean. More, he's beaten mind frame twice. That's that's really the, the takeaway from the Haskell. I, everyone's gone to this bigger picture thing that he's, you know, the best three in the country. I, I think let the let the chips fall while they will, and, and the Travers moving forward. I'm not ready to to anoint him the champion three year old just yet, but he is clearly better than a still learning mind frame. That's not to be said that mind frame can't reverse things in the Travers or the Breeders Cup, but right now Doorknock is is the better horse. There's no denying that. Yeah, and what we did. Mind frame did have trouble at the start. Mind frame also. Uh, you're a trainer, Chad. I guess I would put blinkers on him or something because he looked like he was going to go by and win for fun, and he didn't. No, I, I read. I read. The, I read race, the race went in a slow number. It was only a nine, and mind frame ran faster than Doorknock, even though he lost. So. The, the, the takeaway for me from Saturday, more so than anything else, is that Torpedo Anna should be the favorite in the in the Travers. I mean. She, she ran was, a seven minus, by the way. She was she was super impressive. And she had trouble at the start and didn't yeah. think it made yeah. any difference at all. Um, look, well, I that was a four horse field, and who was she really running? I thought with? she was going to run in the Haskell. She's uh, I, I I would put all my chips on the table now that she's going to run in the Travers, and uh, and I think depending on what happens in the Jim Dandy, which we'll talk about here in a little bit, I think she's going to go off as the favorite, and. Uh, and you know it's it's going to be an exciting exciting race if you if you're able to to get her to face the boys and, and face some of these other horses. I mean, we heard that Mystic Dan is the Derby winner is definitely out of the Travers, maybe done the rest of the year, uh, but still should be an exciting uh, Travers for sure. When is that race? Uh, that'll be the last the last Saturday in August. 
Or okay. second to last Saturday night. So we've got, the we way got, that all right. this year. That's actually the second one. All right, so we got a little bit of time, but it'll be here before you know it. Uh, and then uh, also, by the way, in that race, Fierceness, the one that we handicapped, uh, he, that was the horse that decided not to race. So Fierceness is going to race in this week's race, hopefully, that we're going to be talking about. So um, we'll get into that. Uh, also, by the way, last week, uh, the other winner uh, came from the Mammoth Cup. Uh, and that was the one where Tapa Trice made his return. Hadn't seen him since uh, he ran a seven uh, in the Travers, uh, finishing third. Uh, but uh, he looked awfully good in his return in the Mammoth Cup, Chad. Look, T- Todd's, Todd's got an embarrassment of wealth of riches uh, in that older male division. And uh, Tapa Trice is another one that kind of throws his hat in the ring. We'll see. Um, obviously, we saw Krupe the other day run, you know, win the Suburban on the Belmont undercard. And and went on to run second to next. You have Bright Future that won, Kings Barnes uh, that won. So, I mean, they got to kind of – Todd doesn't like running against each other, unlike Chad Brown. Todd, Todd likes to keep his horses separate. So we'll see who goes in what direction. We'll see Bright Future next Saturday in the Whitney. Uh, looking forward to that. Maybe we'll see somebody else in uh, in West Virginia, maybe somebody in, in Charlestown, the Jockey Club Gold Cup. You know, certainly a lot of different – options and opportunities for these horses so we'll see where they all they all shake loose but i mean and, and look i know it's not fair yet john but wouldn't you say that like a taffer trice and king's barn what we've seen for him lately in bright future those, those older horses and i understand look it's what july now you still have four months of the breeders cup but when you say the older horses clearly right now they look i mean I, I don't know the numbers you know the numbers better than i do on the sheets but i think the older horses are just faster right now than the three-year-olds that we've seen so far yeah, for the most part, you're right. What did, what did Tapper Trice run? Do you have Tapper Trice's? Uh... I'm looking. What race was that? Do you remember? The Mammoth Cup. Oh, the Mammoth Cup. Let's see. That uh, was race 10. No, they don't. They have the Diana, the Kelso, the Sanford, the Quick Call, Million Review, Beverly D, Skylerville, Coronation Cup, Boston, and a Z- I don't know. No. <laughs> Everything but. Okay. okay. Uh, oh, oh, by the way, uh, Carly four ninety four uh, said, "Chad, good luck with Sharp on Saturday." How did Sharp do? And that would be Filoso. He actually he ran a uh, ran terrific, a very good race. We're going to get him started, get started now, and hope to make uh, make an impact on him later on in the year. So, um, couldn't be happier with the results. You know, we don't we don't always. Um, have them geared up and, and, and ready to fire first time out. And so, you know, I thought it was a, a great race, very encouraging, a lot to, to kind of build on moving forward. You know, I mean, look, it's 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 enjoyable doing the show with you guys, but we'd like to be the horses that we're talking about on these races instead of just analyzing them. And, and you know, it looks like we got a couple of them that are that are rounding into form. But in, in this game, it's all about patience, patience, patience. And we're, we're very fortunate and blessed to – to work for an owner who who loves to be patient, so that's uh, that's definitely something that uh, that behooves us, and we're 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 thankful for that. All right, well, those races that we're going to talk about, uh, we have uh, three of them today, and normally we don't have three, uh, but we're going to have three because we have a couple of short fields. Um, we've got one at Del Mar, two at Saratoga. So, uh, what we're going to do first of all, uh, this is this first one is going to be available here on YouTube. So uh, you don't have to panic just yet, uh, but one of these races will be available only on Patreon. But the first race we're going to talk about is at Saratoga. It's going to be the sixth race. It's the sixth furlong race. It's the grade one Alfred G. Vanderbilt. So this is a 350 purse handicap for three-year-olds and up. The morning line favorite is uh, you got Skelly at six to five? That's the six horse. You also have uh, Nakotami, the inside horse, at five to two. So those are the top two contenders as far as the morning line is concerned, John. Uh, again, it's only a six horse field. Uh, how how you know? What do you feel about the uh, the dominance so far? Even though Skelly did not win his last race, he's still been a very dominant horse. Ran a four in April. Yeah, I mean, listen, the, the horse is steady, consistent. He uh, got left last time out, or he's been slow away from the gate, I think, the last couple of races. He's okay. He's 6-5. to five. I don't know if I want to bet anyone at 6-5 to five in this field. It's a short field. That Smusen's looking for his first win of the meet. He's okay. Certainly the horse to beat, but he's going to be a short price. 
I mean, it's, uh, certainly they got to be excited about the post they got, right? I mean, oh. after breaking slow the last couple of starts, you'd like to break on the outside. Uh, you're not in the gate for too long, less time to get in trouble. Uh, I think Ricardo Santana knows his job is on the line. If he were to get beat on, on, on this horse on this day, you know, there's a lot of top jockeys out there that like to ride Skelly, even though he's had all the success with them. Um, the concern with this for me, more so than anything else, um, one, um, Asmussen got beat in this race a few years ago with Matoli, who was about two to five uh, when they set the track record uh, with a little midget that could. And, and I just feel like I've still never been the biggest Skelly fan, despite all, all he's done and how great he's been. Um, I've waited for the carpet to come out, and I just I can't endorse him as a as a heavy favorite. You know, he ran in Saudi Arabia, he came back quickly, and, and was able to put together two big wins in a row. But maybe, you know, it's funny because there's two ways of looking at things. You can look at it and say, or, do they bounce off of coming back from an international race? But also, it's well, maybe they were okay, and now they're experiencing the bounce a little bit later on because they didn't have the proper time to to recover and, 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 and regain their self from there. So um, a lot of different ways to look at it. I agree with John that he's the horse to beat. But, I mean, his workouts have never really been impressive. He works a bunch of 51s and 52s, uh, not what you normally see from, from the world's fastest horses. And I'm just going to try and beat him as the odds-on favorite. Uh, a quick question on, on that horse, uh, Skelly, and also there's another horse. I can't remember which one it was. We'll, I'll bring it up later on. But, I mean, for, for this horse, it's such a good horse. How come why, – why don't we see him in, in bigger races? I mean, this is the first big race, really, he's been in as far as a graded stakes race. I mean, the, the, the race in Saudi Arabia is $1.5 million, sure. right? So I think that has a, a lot to do with it. Um, I think if you notice the L next to his uh, PPs, he was a horse that uh, they wanted to keep on Lasix for as long as possible. And oh, okay. So there weren't, at that time, over the last year, there weren't a lot of opportunities, a place you can go that, that you run in graded stake races without Lasix. Okay. Um, so you see he had a lot of his races in Texas, in, in Arkansas, at Oakland, before they had a changeover. Um, they were Lasix races, and I think that that's why. Um, now they mm-hmm. seem like maybe he's not bleeding as much or, or they have the bleeding under control or, or you know, at least the, the risk of the bleeding, um, I should say, under control. And, and, and he's he was able to go to, to, to Saudi Arabia where you can't run on Lasix and come back and, and, and ran well. And he didn't get beat last time because he didn't have Lasix. He got beat last time because he missed the break and he rushed up. And, you know, look, not for anything, but close the game, Sugar came back and was dominant uh, in his very next race, John. And he's running in uh, in Clasby. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, by the way, uh, Skelly, four. Excuse me, three fours on the board. But the last four, which was in April, as I mentioned, since then a couple of eights. Uh, John kind of uh, tipped off there uh, that he has not yet returned to that four. But uh, this is uh, a horse that could definitely do that. All right, Nakatomi. Now this is the second choice, and yet Nakatomi does have one four. John, it happened in November. That was in the Breeders' Cup Sprint when he finished third. This year, he starts with a nine and a ten. The ten was in the race in Dubai when he finished third. Yeah, I mean, listen, you're not going to bet six one. That exactly isn't worth. You know, there's absolutely no value in playing that race. I don't like this horse. Uh, I don't think I don't like the draw he gets. I don't like anything about him, honestly. And uh, he's got enough time because he ran in March at Dubai. But uh, I would play against this horse. I don't like him. I've banged this drum as loud as I can. We've covered this horse on this show about six or seven different <laughs> times. He's not a six for a long horse. He's one for nine. This is a brilliant horse. He, he's he's made nine hundred sixty-one thousand dollars in his career, and he is a sprinter. But he wants to go at least six and a half or seven. Going six furlongs, he's one for nine. He has two seconds and five thirds, and he was third last time in Dubai. But he was seven and a half lengths behind a a a a, 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 a winner in Tuz. There's things I want to say, but I'm not going to say. Um, and. Uh, he just he needs more distance. I'm sorry. And Skelly's going to go fast enough in front, and that's fine. But for me, I, I, I mean, at, at some point, when well, you've got nine tries at the distance, right, John? I mean, yeah, I agree. Go a little bit further. Yeah. I agree. Skelly's I agree. Skelly, Skelly's fourteen out of fifteen in the money at this distance, 
with 10 first wins. First or second, not in the third. First or second. Right. First yeah, first, first. That's right, yeah. Um, the two and the three are long shots. They're both 20 to one. The two, Twisted Ride John, is coming off a six. But now you're looking at a bounce uh, possibility. The only good thing about that is you're still getting 20 to one. If you're looking for a long shot to hopefully hit the board with one of these favorites, which one of these two would you take? Would you take the, the two with that six? No, I would take, I'd bet the three before I bet the two, but I wouldn't bet either one of them, to be honest with you. You know, you're forcing me to choose between the two and three. I would go with the three because the two is definitely bouncing. I know that. And I don't know, you know, with six furlongs, he is three for nine with three seconds, but uh, he's off too big a race for him, and it was at Parks. I, I don't like him. I mean, I do like the fact that in his greatest sake races, he, he's performed well enough. He was he was second and third in two of his three uh, graded race efforts, but he's cross-entered uh, to run at Laurel on Sunday, and it wouldn't surprise me in this field oh, if uh, six becomes five, which is oh, the, Bel- the Saratoga-Belmont norm. In these stake races, so I just I, I think he's there. I I'm gonna I'm gonna guess that he's not going to run this race. By the way, uh, my buddy B is coming off a nine on a synthetic. He did run a nine the race before that on dirt. He ran a seven last October. All right, the four baby Yodas uh, and the five. Uh, Subrogate John, both seven to two. Baby Yoda is coming off back to back wins, including his first big win, a grade two race at Saratoga. That was last month. He has two eights coming into this one. That's the best number that we've seen from Baby Yoda. Subrogate's got a Red Ortiz Jr. on board, and he's coming off a four. Matter of fact, his line is 16, 11, 9, and 4. But once again, we just talked about a bounce candidate. This is another one. Um, big difference, though. You get this one's down to seven and two. Yeah, but the thing about Baby Yoda is, you talk about horses for courses. This horse absolutely loves Saratoga. He's four for six lifetime. As a two-year-old, as a two-year-old, he ran a five at Saratoga. He hasn't come back to that number, but I, that's the number I like. I like six four. I think that's what's coming in, and that's what I would play. Look, I, I was I, I, fortunate enough to talk to Hall of Fame trainer Bill Mott this morning, and and. He basically says, look, I can't explain it either. He said, the horse loves Saratoga. He goes, he's run two races in Saratoga, which are just mind-boggling performances. And he said, he's training. He's training like that right now. He just, he absolutely loves Saratoga. And so anyone who likes Baby Yoda, I I would not take a a knock against it. Saratoga is a very, very quirky track that, that seems like if you like it, you like it. Baby Yoda certainly likes that track. Um, Subrogate for me is an interesting horse because he's the hot horse. He's the hot hand right now. And, and while he might not be as proven as some of these other horses and, you know, still looks for his first ever stakes victory, uh, he's a horse I've been really, really high on. I actually I went to Monmouth uh, last June in the Pegasus Stakes to try and purchase this horse, and we couldn't get a deal done in place. Um, I've been a big fan of this horse for a long, long time. And, um, you know, the arrogates get better with age. Uh, this horse t- seems to be another prime example of that. He's versatile enough to go six furlongs, even though I think he can stretch out and he's really a true mile of horse or seven ace horse. I look forward to watching him in the forego um, at the end of the meet because I think seven ace kind of hits him right between the eyes. But there's enough pace in this race that sets up for his trip. And uh, we, we saw a ride today for my ride Ortiz in a turf sprint race in the Caress Stakes, which uh, if, if he rides Subrogate like he rode that Philly in the turf stakes, Subrogate will win. Um, he just he's he's in the zone when he wants to be in the zone. I read um, George Orte, he's done a great job. Thirty one percent training privately out the farm for Colts Next Farm of Richard Santuli, and, and, and I think this horse at seven and two is, is more than fair value. If you want to say, look, you got the hot hand. This is almost like uh, if a backup quarterback comes in the game and he's running in the playoffs and they go all the way through the Super Bowl. Ride the hand that took you there. I'm going to take Jeff Hostetler and Subrogate on top here uh-huh. at, at seven to two. Yeah, and again, let's keep in mind, I read Ortiz uh, Jr. on board for the first time. So yeah. uh, that should definitely impact them as well. All right, so, uh, John, you're going six over four? Cold, one uh, one way. All right, Chad, you're going five? I'm going five over four, six. I, I think uh, I think Skelly can still run a good race but come up a little short, and Baby Yoda loves the track. So I'm going to go five over four, six, but I'll take a little bit of an upset here uh, with the, the five subrogate on top. All right, and I'll go six over five. So we're all over the place, which is nice. It's only a, which will be a five-horse field more than likely when uh, you see this race 
close to 3.30 on Saturday. And by the way, the weather will be fine at both Saratoga and Del Mar. Okay, so uh, we have one more to go on YouTube, and that is going to be the second race at Saratoga. And this is the Jim Dandy, the grade two, mile and an eighth. Uh, we've got a $500,000 purse for three-year-olds. And you have the favorites. You've got Sierra Leone, the Even Money, the One Horse. And the six is Fierceness, the nine-to-five shot uh, posting six. So just like the uh, race we just talked about, the one and the six, those are the top two uh, contenders as far as the morning line odds. But we've got to start with Sierra Leone, who just keeps getting closer and closer and closer. Matter of fact, the sheet line, John, still is excellent because – you know, he, he, he ran an 11 to start the year. Eight, seven, six. He's got the win in the Bluegrass, second in the Derby, third in the Belmont. Is this his race again? Are we going to see another big win for Sierra Leone? Well, he's never done anything wrong. He's got six career starts. Each race on the figures is better than the previous one. And he's making little forward moves. You know, he yep. know, just always seems to find trouble. But uh, Saturday could certainly be the day. You know, honestly, I don't think you want to bet this race. This is probably a great race to watch because I don't see how you could possibly make any money. I mean, honestly. Yeah, sure. Especially if it's 1-6, yeah. Yeah, even if it's 6-1, you're not making any money. So, I mean, and those two horses clearly, clearly lay over this field. So, Can I tell you how you make money in this race? Yeah. Seize the Gray is owned by 438 people who own who have 438,000 friends. My racehorse takes way too much money. Seize the Gray won the Preakness. He's six to one morning line. The horse is going to get cut in half, and he's he'll, got be zero he'll be zero chance. He'll be. I, I'm not saying he's going to win. I'm saying that's where you make the money okay. because Sierra Leone's going to drift because people are tired of him and really runs in and he's breaking from the rail. He never wins with all those great numbers. He, you know, he just. He, he was supposed to win last time. He didn't win. Look, he was supposed to win the time. Sierra Leone has to win this race. First of all, he has to win this race. Yeah. <laughs> okay. If he doesn't win this race, he might as well just go right to stud. Okay. Like you're he, right. He needs to win this race. And and in in a field of six, which maybe stretches out to five, who knows? Right. Six is a lot for this. Um, in a field of six, yeah. There's five horses that want to be on the lead. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the worst sets up well. But you couldn't get <laughs> Danny, Danny, Gar- Danny Gargan makes the brilliant decision of running door knock in the Haskell, where there's not that much speed, and he was able right. to kind of control things and, and do things he wanted. If he's here, this is a tough race for door knock to win. If he, if do- if you replace door knock with Sierra Leone, I'm not sure that I'm picking door knock on top the way the race sets up. This is this is an ideal ideal race for Sierra Leone. He's got every chance to get himself corrected and straightened out because they should be coming back to him at the wire. Now, that being said, he needs to do what he needs to do. He's trained very, very forward for this in the morning time. Again, we don't know what kind of bid he's going to use this time, this and that. Chad Brown Chad Brown has, has asked them and pleaded with them to make the track fair. John, you've watched Saratoga every day. It certainly looks like it's a lot more fair than it was on Belmont Stakes Day. There doesn't seem to be a bias. If there is a bias, it almost seems like it's a bias towards uh, oh, off the pace horses right. and on the pace horses. So uh, another another check mark in the uh, in the box of Mechanical New York's own Chad Brown. I, I just think everything goes in his corner. And that being said, I understand the trepidation of people wanting to take Sierra Leone. If you're going to tell me that this horse drifts a little bit and he's eight to five, I think he's worth a bet because I just oh, think yeah. he's. You think he's going to be eight to five? I, I do. The, I mean, everybody I looks at the same form we look at. Everyone is speed. That, the race, like you said, the race just falls into I, his lap. I listen. I think sees the great. I think these these owners for my racehorse, they look at they look at only my race. So they're blindly they're blind followers. Yes, they're they're, they, they, they 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 are all in on their own horses. And I've watched this horse breeze. He breezes so freaking backwards. His one eleven and two. I think he went like 45 and two the first half and just walked home. I didn't. I mean, we lost them behind the, all the uh, the debris and the trees and the cars and the, everything else in the infield. We couldn't even find him uh, by the time he finished because he slowed down so much. I, I don't think Caesar Gray is coming into this race very well. Um, obviously, look, we we gave out Batten down last time out in the Ohio Derby. He was the upset winner. He's a horse on the improve, but. He needs to show that he can sit off the pace because there's no way he's going to be in front of Seize the Gray the way Seize the Gray's been training. And and Pony Express is another one that looks like he wants to move forward. For me, 
Pony Express is the apple card in this race because he's a little bit of the unknown. It's not like John Sadler to really aggressively ship his horses. I know there's not a lot of three-year-old races in, in California, John, but this horse screamed of, I thought he was going to go to the West Virginia Derby. He was listed as a probable for that race. It would have been an easier spot. The fact that they ship over here and aggressively take this on for a gun runner, $500,000 horse, I know he's just a maiden winner, and he was 8-1 to one on that day. But, I mean, it's a little bit interesting that he shows up in this race, Sean, no? Yeah, I mean, listen, and but Sadler over the years has never really shipped well. I mean, no, the, you only know, time, the only time he shipped well is when he beat me. Yeah, in the when he had Hey, well, a flight line and accelerate, and 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 when he lost when he lost the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile at two to five with Catalina Cruiser, I was thinking that I was in a good spot in the Breeders' Cup Classic and accelerate crush. But, but the biggest joke is seized the gray because the when he won the Preakness, that that was a conveyor belt. It was a wet track, covered that race, and it was he, a great ride. Yeah, he has zero chance. <laughs> yeah, zero. He has yeah. zero chance. Yeah, he ran he a nine said, that we'll day. Be on the show next week, I'll tell you right now. I will put myself on suspension if this horse wins. He has zero. Don't you, you think he takes money? Yeah, he'll take money. Be exactly before what you said. That's it's my it. race horse. They're a bunch of you know. They all bet their horses. They got two thousand owners. I just, I, I just think. Look, I think fierceness is going to take some money. Right, you got all of that. Fierceness could win because fierceness alternates. He ran, he ran very. He ran a five as a two-year-old. That's not easy to do, and he's coming off the bad race. He never puts two races together. And but look, he was he was good. awesome. He was awesome in Saratoga in the debut, even though the second yeah. place finisher was better than him. But yeah. but I think I, I think ultimately, with fierceness, he needs to prove. He he disappointed me so First bad. Well, where has he been since the Derby? Listen, he, they always have a problem. You know, hey, I'm not even sure he'll run on Saturday. He never shows up. He, he always dis he some disappointed problem. me so badly in the Kentucky Derby because he sat the trip and had no excuse. And you can say he didn't want to go a mile and a quarter, but well, his excuse is he never puts two races together. That's we fine. said that's, it before the Derby. That's, that's a that's a, it's, it's difficult to make that to like I know we you see that in form lines, but. The, the horse and the well, connection. We said it before the race. You know, I said it anyway. Yes, I did, didn't yeah, I? Yeah, didn't we I, talked I, about you know, it. You know what the, listen, you know what the other interesting thing is about fierceness that nobody's talked about on any of these shows and podcasts and previews? Because he was I only listened to this podcast, by the because way. I don't listen because to he was entered in the Haskell, guess what he didn't do last week? What he didn't did have he a breeze. Do? Oh, he was okay. going into this race on a, on a guy like Todd Fletcher who, who – it is by the book as they come every seven day, bop, 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 bop on the wood. This horse comes into the race having not breathed in two weeks. And that's another interesting kind of factor as well. He's a backup. He's a backup plan in the Haskell. Now he's diverting here, but he doesn't have a workout in between. I, it just, I still don't think this horse passes the sniff test. And if they're, if they're the same odds, which I think that they might be, ironically enough, I'm going to take Sierra Leone over. Me over. too. I'm also taking Sierra Leone. But unfortunately, it's a cold number. It's going to be 1-6. So. I'm going to make it 1-3. Okay. I, I'm going to think Batten Down is going to try and, going to try and sit off Thistle a little Downs bit. Thistle carried him home. You were right about him last oh, week. I, 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 I just, I just think he's a totally he's, different track than he's be running on set, I think. I th I, I, I'm banking on the fact that he can sit off it a little bit. I'm banking on the fact that Judd Mott wanted to run this horse in the Belmont Stakes off the maiden win. And okay. he's a half. He's a half. We talked about this before. He's a half to Tacitus and Celia, who are very, very talented horses who can, who can run all day long. I don't think that a mile and eighth is a problem for him. He broke his maiden going a mile and a quarter. While some of these other horses, I, like Gould's Gold, I still don't think really wants to see out that distance. Sees the great despite his win in the Preakness. I really don't think he truly wants to go that far. I, I just, I, I think it's one, it's one three all day long. If you want to make a slight three one as a, as a small upset, because Sierra Leone doesn't want to win, fine. But, but I think it's one three. Okay. Yeah. Uh, hopefully the odds with that three, because he's five to one. I mean. Do you think he's going to stay at five to one? Yes. No, yeah, he's going to go. He'll go off longer. You're going to have. They're going to go for seize the gray, like you said, my racehorse, and then you have the two big guns in the race. He's going to be ignored, Chad. I think. And that's a good yeah. thing. Yeah. So. Yeah, if you like him, it's a great. Uh, thing. And by the way, keep this in mind. We're talking about fierceness now. Even though you would think that this is the time he's going to go out there and have a big dominating win, which he might. In the three races that he didn't win, he did not finish second. You know what I love, by the way? Can it's all or nothing for him. Can I tell you what I love? What? Even if he does have a dominating performance, 
Jonathan can't wait till we get back on the Traverse show and say, well, the, he's going to bounce in the Traverse. Oh, yeah. No That's true. Traverse. That is true. I can, I, can, I can guarantee you Absolutely. one thing. Absolutely. When we do the Traverse show, whether Fierceness is running in the race or not, he will not pick Fierceness on that, no matter That's what, because sure. of the opposite running line. <laughs> so one way or another, if we lose on him this week, we'll get him back next time. Uh, all right. So, John, you're going one over six. Yeah, one six. Chad? Actually, I would really love to go one five, but I'm going to go one six. Go ahead. Chad, you're go going one over three. One three. One three yeah. And I'm going to go one over four five. Uh, see if I can make some money and uh, hope that fierceness stays out of my way. All right. Uh, let's now say goodbye to our YouTube audience. Hit subscribe. Hit subscribe. That's right. Because. Uh, Keep in mind that the only way you can check out what we're going to talk about next, which is going to be the race at Del Mar, we're going to talk about the Bing Crosby. Um, how, about, how about this? I'm also going to give out uh, the best two-year-old in Saratoga who's running on Saturday on Patreon. Ooh. Oh. The best two-year-old running on in Saturday. Saratoga, making his debut. Running at Saratoga. Saturday. All right. Yes, so nobody knows who that two-year-old is unless – you go to Patreon. So again, link in the description. Five dollars a month. You can pay this month. You can cancel next month. I'm sure you won't because you'll be very satisfied. But for everybody else, of course, that means Patreon. We are going to continue.